this is Reese, and today I will be giving you an in-depth look into the Los Angeles Metro Seat Line, previously known as the Green Line. Welcome to my channel, RF Transit, and I hope you enjoy the video. The Metro Sea Line opened on August 12, 1995, making it 28 years old today. It runs from the Gateway City to one end in Norwalk to the other end in Redondo Beach, South Bay. The route covers 19.3 miles, with the majority of the route being in the median of the I-105 freeway, and consists of 14 different stations. It also is completely grade separated, having no automobile crossings. It was originally supposed to consist of automated trains having no crossings, but this was not approved. So, the line opened up as a part of the controversial highway I-105 freeway. The construction of this freeway in the 90s had two very big problems. One being bullying low-income black communities, and the second being having the most of the tracks in the middle of an inaccessible, loud, and smoggy freeway. A mass transit line was planned to be built at the same time they were building the freeway, and this project was part of the original freeway plan. So there were some good intentions putting transit in the middle of a busy, car-centric freeway. The line is still useful today, but it had some issues during the initial planning stages of the line, such as the line only running along the freeway for the majority of the line, but not allowing it to continue to surrounding communities, such as the end of Norwalk, which is one of the biggest flaws of the line, being around 2.5 miles from LAX terminals, and not allowing a vital road connection, which could have gone to the airport, which would have been very helpful to many people today. The difficult construction of the I-105 freeway was the last freeway to be constructed in the Los Angeles metro area, while many new transportation lines have been continued to expand, which is a positive as transportation grows, but freeways have not grown. So the Metro Green Line runs between the hours of 4 a.m. to midnight. During the peak hours, the headways of the train are 10 minutes, and during off-peak hours, headways are 15 minutes. Past the time of 8 p.m., the train has headways of 20 minutes. And pre-COVID numbers saw 41,000 weekly riders on this train, but post-COVID numbers have fallen and are still recovering back up to this number. So here are some factors um, that I've rated on the line. I've taken the line personally, and I've had many experiences online, either going to the airport, seeing it in the middle of the median, or just taking it to various different events. Um, for efficiency, I give the line a 505, and this is surprising as it does not seem the line does a lot, or doesn't go very many places, but it goes around 19.3 miles in 34 minutes, which for a train line, uh, like a in-the-city commuter line, is very well, good, because most of these trains take forever, you know, especially light rail trains that stop like traffic lights in LA, a lot of issues like that, but this train seems to have no problem, so the top speed is 65 miles an hour, there's sometimes it even passes cars on the freeway, which is a great positive, so 5 of 5 for me on this one. A uh, location, it's not good at all. I give it some 1 of 5, lowest rating it could be. Uh, the line provides service to some people in the area, but it's in a very dirty and loud location with a gray median, and it's inaccessible to the houses and lands that are around it, and it had to be cleared um, many people's houses, which just wasn't fair at all and just completely wrong by the government to be built. So it's just far from 5 stars. It's nothing good about this location besides that it's in like the city, but otherwise one of five. For cleanliness and safety, my experience at the Green Line, it's been quite clean, but there are some garbage and some, you know, people who don't keep it that nice. But the safety is more of a concern. Uh the safety concerns in the Green Line are very visible. It passes through some of Los Angeles most dangerous areas. And there have been reports of fights, muggings, all these different kind of issues in the train which have been reported about. So it's a two of five for safety. And the overall rating of the Green Line, I give it a 2 of 5, because it does have a purpose, of course. People still ride it, and people still use it for some trips in the east-west section of South Los Angeles. But there is a lot more cars that are being used in this train, and there's too many negative aspects for me to rate this any higher. So the overall rating is below an average line, and I give it a 2, point, two of 5. Thank you. And then, here are some photos taken of me on the line, when I've taken it myself. So I've been taking, I've enjoyed taking the line, but that's up to your choice when you take the line, your experiences, your opinion, and then the future of the line. So in the future, 
the green line will connect with the Crenshaw line, which will con connect the upcoming years and bring a direct rail connection to the airport with a transfer at um, Aviation LAX. And the Crenshaw line might also join onto the green line track as a future route to give easy access for satellite to the airport. So the Crenshaw line has three different options of what could happen. Here are the three different plans. So Metro is still considering these three options, but it's up to you. What do you think is the best plan? Uh, Metro is also has a plan to extend the line further into South Bay on a four-mile extension, which has not been confirmed yet, and there are two planned stations, one at South Bay Galleria, as shown in this picture, and the other at the future Torrance Transit Center. This can extend more transit, rail transit in specific into South Bay and hopefully get more riders to come on the line. But these projects are definitely in the future, not right now. Far to come. I hope you enjoyed my video of the Green Line today, and have a good day. Thank you.